Hi YouTube, this is Andy from All Things Mini and this is a video response on um, the latest news that we are all reeling back from with regards to um, uh, uh, miniwargaming.com having to close down and the latest changes of, of uh, Games Workshop. So as in response to um, mini uh, gaming uh, miniwargaming.com um, it's gutting that they are closing down um, their shop. I mean it would be gutting for the people that obtain their products from them. Um, I was very very glad to hear that they're still continuing on with their uh, with their videos and the like. You know they produce damn good videos, everybody enjoys it you know from the terrain making to the you know the beat map, bat, bat rap and all that kind of stuff. I mean so I'm very sad that they are closing their shop. I mean, I haven't bought anything from them, if I have to be honest. Um, but I'm sad that they are closing their shop, and due to you know various other issues, and also yeah, GW. Um, but um, I'm still happy that they're going to continue. And hopefully, who knows, one day they might reopen up their shop again. We can only hope so. So. Um, guys, you know, keep up the good work that you are doing, and please, you know, um, please do uh, keep your videos going. And you know, it's a bit, it's a big, big shame. Now, <clears throat> this is, as I said, it's a video response, so it's not basically, you know, it's not going to be sort of trying to spread any kind of hate, hate um, <laughs> campaign or anything like that. But basically, um, you know, I just thought I'd put my pennies worth in. Um, bearing in mind I've been involved with the hobby, for, apart from a slight um, gap in between, but I've been involved in the hobby um, just a little bit after Rogue Trader days and the first ad days, you know, basically I can still remember what the models were like then and I've shown you some of the ones that I've had and what else I've been. Um, so I thought I might put, you know, I might put my pennies worth in there. Now, um, Games Workshop have decided to make it even more even harder for um, international sellers like miniwargaming.com and, and other international gamers, uh, gaming um, uh, suppliers, and um, that will undoubtedly be, um, you know, it's going to have a knock-on effect. Now, what kind of effect it will have, we don't really know, not yet. I mean, I watched Matt's um, video, which this is, of course, a response to Matt. Um, basically, you know, I've seen Games Workshop doing stupid things like this over the years, and it just doesn't surprise me. And the the response from the gaming um, the gaming community in general, again, doesn't surprise me. And there's, you know, you you'll get the you'll get the videos where the people, right, you know, I'm done with GW. I can't stand the way they're treating people, I can't stand the way that they're doing this and the other, blah, 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 blah. I feel sad, but I'm still done with them, and what else have you. And it's, it's a bit like that, because, you know, people do put these little things on, you know, on YouTube, what else have you, on their own YouTube channels, and, you know, they've got every right to air their views, they have every right to say, well, no, I don't think this is good. I think GW are taking the mick. I don't like this because you're doing this, I don't like that because you're doing that, and so on and so forth. But one or two voices out of how many people there are in the world who are supporting GW, you know, what's that going to do? Now, don't think it's going to do nothing. Because, you know, you're watching this video, you know, mostly watched all the other videos, all the conspiracy, you know, videos about, oh, the Games Workshop doing this and the other. Well, you know, the constant fact that they're not, they are doing these things shows that it isn't a conspiracy, and that's an actual fact. So, um, you know, you know, voices do start from one voice, and then it increases and increases, but, you know, with people yelling boycott, 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 you do have to make sure that um, you do it in the right way. Now, I'll give you an example. One thing, um, I, I was watching another chap who put a video response, and he was basically just sort of saying, you know, just boycott them, what the hell are we doing, just boycott them, go to somebody else, just boycott them, that kind of thing. I have to agree on the fact, you know, yes, you know, boycotting um, 
is the most powerful tool that we as consumers and gamers have. Now, if it wasn't for people like miniwargaming.com and all the other sort of YouTube channels and also the other things that people do, if it wasn't for them, Games Workshop wouldn't have the customer base it has because it can only do so much. Now, the games, obviously people like their games. Obviously people like their uh, models. But it's word of mouth and constant sort of, look at this, I've got this wonderful model from GW and I'm going to unbox it for you so you can see what you can buy. I'm going to paint it for you so you can see how you paint it and I'm going to play it for you so you can see how it plays. And then somebody thinks, well that's a damn good idea. I know what, I'm going to buy that model. And then they buy it and then Games Workshop gets the money. It, you know, word of mouth does travel and there has been, you know, I have watched over the last couple of years an increasing amount of people. Every time there's been an increase in the prices at GW, which there is every year practically, you know, they basically say, oh, boycott them, they're too expensive, they're too expensive, and then, you know, it all dies down. It really does die down in a couple of days, maybe, you know, maybe one or two days. Well, a couple being two, but you know what I mean, you know, a week to a couple of days. And basically, as, as the chap said, and as I've just alluded to, the fact that consumer power is massively, massively powerful. It is a mob mentality, you know, that controlled practically Rome because the mob had to be pleased or whatever's on you. And this is one of the things that we, you know, we have to realise that money does, you know, mean an awful lot. I mean, Games Workshop, you know, let's just be honest. Games Workshop are cutting back on people selling their products because too many people have obviously been going to different companies instead of Games Workshop. Whereas Games Workshop would be getting the the level of um, the level of profit that they want and not what they would perceive as their competition, but it's only competition for profits, not competition for for products. So basically, you know, that's what they're doing. They are trying to monopolise. You know, let's just be honest. They are monopolising it. But Games Workshop has a very, very big control over the uh, minis, the minis, and the wargaming um, uh, hobby in general. You ask many people out there about hobbies and playing with little men that you have to paint and stuff like that, or women, in fact, little, little women you have to paint and what else have you. And I could, I could bet that an awful lot of people say, oh, that's Games Workshop or something like that, even if they don't really know too much. So as I've already stated, that um, consumer power is very important. And I'll give you some examples. Um, Back when um, B Sky B, that's British Sky Broadcasting and the satellite channel service in the UK, Sky, um, they had a Frank Bruno Mike Tyson um, uh, boxing match and it was a very, very big thing. It was in the 90s, if I remember rightly, I can't exactly tell you when the date was. And basically, Sky did something that a lot of companies will try and they see how the market reacts. They said, right, you know, you've got to pay for your, for your satellite television subscription. On top of that, you're paying for your uh, TV license, but that doesn't go to them, but they've got to pay for their people and their products, so you're going to have to pay them a separate fee. Um, your sports and what else have you, you know, if you're on that special fee, let's say, let's say you get Sky, Sport, Sky Sports, you basically um, pay you know, your, size, your Sky Sports subscription, and in which case um, everything's all fine, except for this uh, uh, Bruno Tyson fight, when they decided, well actually, we're going to do something new for the UK, I don't know if uh, American TV or any other country's TVs for that matter, their TV provider, television providers, uh, service anyway, um, I don't know if they were doing it beforehand, but it wasn't the case in this country, or not that I remember, remember anything of it. But basically, they had um, this fight, and they really bigged it up. It's, yeah, it's going to be a big fight. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. But it's going to cost you an extra ten pounds just to watch the fight on that one night. Now, if people had said, "No chance. We're already paying our TV license, and we're paying you a subscription for Sky Sports. We're not going to pay you," then that would have fallen straight on its face. But because people, some people were prepared to pay. Now you get so much, you've got box office where you have to pay separately, you get so many sports channels and sporting sort of things where you have to, again, 
pay separately, you know, and this is just, I'm not talking about annual subscription, I'm talking about the sort of one-off sort of things, you know, that are pretty big in, in whatever arena that they're doing, you know, um, like, you know, a, a major sort of rugby tournament or, you know, not rugby tournament, or rugby final or a football final or, or whatever sport final, but basically they sort of say, right, you know, you've got to pay a little bit extra so that you can have the privilege of watching that. And it was a big shame. And also, back in the, uh, let's think, it was 2005. I remember 2005 when fuel increases were really biting quite hard. I mean, it was, it, I mean I'd mean, i rather pay the 2005 price now than we're, what we're paying today. But the fuel prices in, in the UK were getting a lot. I mean, the Americans moan and moan about having fuel, having increased fuel prices, but uh, believe you me, you do not know what paying for fuel is until you come back to the UK. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, the, um, the fuel increases and people started blockading the fuel depots so fuel didn't go out. And fuel increases were, were, you know, they were just going up and up and up and up, you know, per litre, you know, and once it reached that one pound mark, people went <gasps> like that. And then they said, right, we're going to stop the fuel from getting out, so we're going to cost the, the oil companies money. And that's what matters most in business, money. So what happened? People went out and panic bought um, fuel. So of course they're absolutely laughing, they're so silly, the, the, um, the, the oil companies. Because, you know, yeah, okay, yeah, just, just buy all our stock. Don't worry, the, the protesters will be gone soon, and then you still got the price to deal with. And I could wager that although um, gallon uh, per barrel, fuel per barrel, has been increasing over the years, and it will naturally do so, but I mean, it's been increasing at a rather alarming rate, um, you know, I could imagine, I could fully well bet that the uh, fuel price today which is what, £1.45, £1.46 for a litre of diesel, will be, it would be maybe sort of £1.20, who knows, I, I don't know, I'm not an economist. But basically, you know, I can imagine that if people sort of said, right, no, we are not going to buy fuel for a week, not even panic buy the week before but to, so that we can use the fuel, if people were able to just get on with their lives and just try and not use cars so much, or you know whatever they use their fuel for, then basically, I mean, could you imagine the thousands upon thousands per minute that the oil companies would be losing? And so you know, consumer power is massive, and that's one thing that you've got to really think about. Now, with regards to Games Workshop, I have noticed over the years a degradation of service from Games Workshop. Um, one of my videos I put of Vallejo versus Citadel Paints, whatever, you know, that's, you know, that's my personal preference. Some people really get on with um, Citadel Paints and fair, you know, fair play to you. Some people get on with Reaper Paints or, you know, P3 Paints or, or whatever paints there are. You know, I like Vallejo, you know, some people don't like it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about any of that. But it's the, the aspect of service. Now, as I said in that video, I do not like GW's business and practices. And this is certainly one of the cases. And the um, the thing I don't like is that they do screw over their um, they screw over the their client clientele, the people that go and buy their stuff. They also screw over their their own people who work for them, and they are screwing over the uh, well indirectly, shall we say, screwing over the actual wargaming community as itself. But we'll get to that soon enough. The um, the issues are, um, like Finecast, uh, I mean, as you know, I absolutely hate Finecast. Some people love it, what I say, but, you know, with the continual price increase that you get from Games Workshop, and the fact that Games Workshop models have always been expensive, even back in the first Ed days, you looked at the model and go, good grief, I'm paying up for that. And, you know, and nowadays you hear, like, you know, I've, I've heard many times when I've gone to the Games Workshop near me, well, relatively near me, you know, bearing in mind I do live in the countryside, um, basically, they're sort of, you know, you've got this kid, oh, mummy, 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 I want this battle force, I want this space marine battle force. And the, and the parents look at it and they almost have a heart attack. They go, I'm not paying 80 quid for just a load of plastic models. You must be off your trolley. Ah, you know. And, you know, I went and asked uh, some, some of the people at Games Workshop one time, and one of the replies I got was, 
well, we will never have um, a reduction in price because it devalues the product. And that's the way that they look at it, you know, it's all devaluing and stuff like that, but it's only going to increase in value, which is actually very incorrect. Um, but, you know, Games Workshop do these type of things, said, um, you know, they had a massive price hike, they had a double price hike when they changed from lead content metal to white metal, which is a much impurer version of the metal to use. It's still pretty good, I'd like metal models, you know, but you know, it's still a it's still an impurer version of lead models. And they would say, oh it's safety and all that kind of business, and because it's this, that and the other, we're having to increase the prices. And then of course they did that um, recently with Finecast. Now I've been on like, you know, Daka Daka Forum and what else have you, and people, you know, you get some people who are so rabidly pro GW and so rabidly anti GW. It doesn't matter, I mean, it, it, no matter what happens in, in their uh, argue, argument or, or, or whatever GW does, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, two stupid examples were somebody who's rabidly pro um, GW, they sort of say, right, uh, I haven't got anything, but you know, they give you a block. Um, just imagine, well, yeah, just imagine this little, you know, flames of war thing is a, 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 just a square, just a square block of resin. They give you that and they sell it to you for 20 quid and say, right, what you've got to do is you've got to build your little arms and legs and your helmet and your gun and therefore you can have whatever kind of marine you like. That's 20 pounds. And some idiot who is so rabidly pro GW would say, that's wonderful, that's fantastic, I'll buy that. But then on the on the flip side, you would have somebody who is um, so rabidly anti GW that they would actually say, you know, that they would go along and sort of say, right, okay, uh, GW's got a sale. Let's say for you know, let's say hell freezes over for once, the pigs are flying in the sky, and for once they have a sale, and then the sale comes out sort of right. We are dropping everything down to ten percent price of what it is. So. Um, uh, 85 pounds for a, I don't know, a, a battalion set of vampire counts is now 8 pounds 50. Some people who are rabidly anti oh, well, that's still a load of crap, I'm not paying that, and they would have a right bloody go because, you know, they're not going to be told. But, I, you know, with the fine cast and the way that they increase the prices and all that for that, I had exactly the same issue when I, you know, I put on, you know, I've, I've had nothing but trouble with fine cast. Full stop. I've had trouble all the time, and they do try and tell me, "Oh, well, you're, you know, it's a bit unfortunate." Blah blah blah. blah. But first of all, I mean, you know, in my sort of replies, and I, and I put these to, and I actually got in contact with somebody at GW sort of head office about this, and I said, "Right, you know, I, I listed the level of um, models that I've had issues with." Now I'm going to show you something. Now this is my metal. That is my. Uh, that's my metal version. Of uh, oh good grief, he's not Bosnic rock. Um, oh damn, it'll come to me. I'll put it in a. I'll put it in a little piece of you know a little bit of text around about here. But basically, that's that model. This is the fine cast version. It looks okay, yeah. Until I compare both of them. Can you see the difference? Can you see that difference there? Now I've had to actually to weight that one down. Um, to try and use it, but I'm basically going to mostly sell this one off or, or maybe just keep it as a bit of a laugh, really, because they're both, I'm putting them as, ho as, as, as horizontal as possible for the pair of them, and this one in time has just sagged down more and more and more, and that's fine cast. It, also, he, uh, he's got issues with some mold lines which were just impossible to get rid of, and also with bits and pieces. Now, I've had things like with massive air bubbles, I've had, you know, what I, I've had just issue after issue after issue. And I laid this out in an email to, to um, Games Workshop, and basically um, all the problems I've had, I've had bits missing, I've had massive air bu bubbles, and I basically said, and as I will always say, for the amount of price, the, the amount of money that these things cost, I don't expect to have to do that. It's exactly the case of having... Um, buying a car brand new and basically having something missing in it, having a, a permanent leak in a fuel line. You know, and and some people in the wargaming forums just say, oh well, just suck it up and, and deal with it. But there are other people that just sort of say, well actually, no, he's got a point because why should we have to pay all this money and we are paying through the nose for this stuff. That's the issue. I mean, if this stuff was quite cheap, um, 
then basically, you know, do you really have any, you know, do you have really have any kind of uh, issue there? I mean, you know, I'm just getting into Flames of War, and um, I saw there's a company that, it's a Russian company, that sells like a little tank like this for £2.99, which, you know, isn't bad, it's a pretty good price, and if there's something wrong with it, then maybe, you know, oh, well, yeah, well, just try and patch it up and make do, because it's quite cheap. But basically, you know, for things that cost a lot of money, I don't want to patch them up, I don't want to green stuff them, I don't, you know, I don't care, because you never used to have to. Not I did, personally speaking, anyway, back in the day, back in the first ed, second ed days, you never had to do that. So, um, you know, I put all this stuff down, I put all, the, all my problems with, that I've had with Finecast down, and I sent it off in an email to GW. Now, the degradation of service and the way that they screw over their, their customers, basically I got an email back which was just nakedly self-serving advert for how wonderful GW was, and at the bottom, hope this helps. You know, thanks Steve or whatever it was. And then I replied and said, actually, no, it doesn't help at all. And I said, it doesn't help one little bit. You know, he, he was basically in his, in his email, I hope I've got them on my university email, I, I, I don't know if I have, because you have to delete quite often to get service space, and whatever. But basically, I had a, um, I had, uh, uh, he was basically stating that it's, you know, fine cast is the best thing since sliced bread. It is much more, um, much more uh, detailed than, the metal models, and it can be this, and it can be that, and, da -da -da -da, and it will basically solve the Middle East peace crisis, and it will also solve the ozone layer, and you know, and you know, all that kind of business. And basically, what, um, and basically, the the issues that I had uh, I, with that, I mean, I, I said to him, I, I replied, said, well, actually, no, I refute your claims. First of all, I refute your whole email. I said, because it's nothing more than nakedly self-serving. And you have not answered one single bit of my thing. And I, 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 my original email was basically saying, well, what are you going to do about it, sort of thing. And then I stated, I said, well, I have scientific proof, which I have, on um, the surface analysis I did from a fine cast Drago Caldor and a metal Drago, Dra Drago Caldor. And um, I use I use a, a program called MEX. Now at the time I was doing this, our at Kent University and the National History Museum are the only two institutions in the whole of the UK that have this program. This program costs six thousand pounds and it is used it is used um, Elsewhere, obviously, but it is a major, major. Uh, it makes um, three-dimensional um, digital elevation maps of what I've been doing. So I could take some some images of this, and I could basically put this on a on a um, computer screen, which I did for Drago. <coughs> oh, oh yeah, and you know, and I can study all the imperfections and absolutely everything from this surface, and I use it for my cratering experiments. Now, so basically, um, I stated this, and I said, well, you said that you know. Um, Finecast is much better, uh, much more detailed, and I refute, the flat, uh, I refute that, cl uh, that claim with the fact that I've got scientific evidence which states that it is no different. There is no different except for a few holes that have appeared in the Finecast than the metal. And lo and behold, he then replies back, oh well, send me the data. He didn't even ask. He just basically sort of said, well, Thank you for you know. Thank you for your email. Send me the data so I can pass it on to my um, tech guy so they can have a look at it. In which case, I replied pretty damn promptly and said, "Well, in no uncertain terms, you can stick your head up your own backside and whistle Dixie, as far as I'm concerned, because one, it's my data; two, it's a program which I know for a fact you do not use; and three, well, at the time anyway; and three, your people should be doing this kind of stu uh, this kind of analysis anyway to make claims that you are much more detailed on one model to the other. So you know." That was the case, you know, then, and then basically from, you know, that day on, I have never bought Finecast, even if I need a model desperately, I'll scour everything I can, maybe even look for different kinds of models which I can use to, to represent it, if I, you know, I just do not want to use Finecast. So, you know, and that's one of the things that GW have been doing, you know, they, you know, they have been sort of like, oh, well, we, we don't give a toss about customers, new customers we care about, the staff, I mean, you know, what kind of company do you work for um, where everything you paint, whether it's stuff that you've had to buy yourself for your own use, is actually 
GW um, intellectual property. Until you leave GW, all the things that you do, anything, anything GW related, and you're not allowed to do commission work, you're not allowed to do anything, because anything that you do which is GW re uh, related, basically, um, oh, is owned by GW until you leave. And, uh, you know, some of these people, I mean, you get some people in GW stores who are absolute morons. You get some people in GW stores who are absolutely fantastic. You know, but basically, they all have to have... Um, CRB checks because they're dealing with children and at times they're almost like, you know, um, uh, what's it called, nursery, they, they, they're like crash people, they have to look after children when the mum and dad just dumps them, dump them there to basically go and do their shopping, you know, and, and they do this for minimum wage. You know, and they're, you know, yeah, they get a 50% discount from GW stuff and 25% from Forgewell, but, you know, they still screw over their own staff, and that's one thing that we've got to remember. But the thing is, why do they do this? It's because they, they hold a niche market. They are monopolising a niche market. You know, people are, really, you know, people are in the mentality, if they're involved in this kind of stuff, like Warhammer and whatnot, um, they're just really into it, <laughs> if you get my meaning, they're really into it. And it's, and it's a real, real shame, really. I'm trying to move on because I can see the time's going on. You know, I don't want to bore the living crap out of people. So basically, um, you know, with the continued price increases, there, are, there have been issues because the other companies are also doing likewise. Now, I know there's materials, I know there are costs involved, but still, you know, with an awful lot of things, I mean, you know, this isn't actually Flames of War, this is um, Plastic Soldiers. Now, Flames of War models cost an absolute fortune, and they are this big, you know, and, I mean, the tanks look nice, the infantry doesn't, in my opinion, which I will definitely go to Plastic Soldiers, and there's another one also, there's another company. You know, there are, you know, there are companies that are coming out, and there was one in particular, I was, I was looking forward to it coming out, because I was thinking about doing it, but once I read the prices, I would know it could do it, and that's Drop Zone Commander. It came from the idea of one chap, it was a very good idea, the models look quite nice, I'm not actually going to say that they're the most amazing models I've ever seen, but they do look nice, you know, don't get me wrong. But, you know, with the Drop Zone Commander, you know, people were, oh, we can't wait for this, we can't wait for that, and the person actually said, oh, well, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to give, make my game, and uh, make it, you know, accessible to people, and affordable, because I remember reading that one in one um, uh, article. And then you find out that the, the scale is quite small scale, and you know, like three little tanks like that costs about fifteen to twenty pounds. That's insane. That really is insane. Now, you know, games workshops increased prices. You know, the other companies are only doing what is like a business, a business sense, within a certain respect. They're basically seeing games workshop lift their prices continually, people moaning about it, maybe lose a, you know, some custom, but you know, there's more custom coming quite often, and basically they'll just go along and sort of say along the lines of, well, you know, why don't we just sell our, property, uh, our, our um, products for that amount of money? And you think to yourself, well, you know, that makes business sense, it isn't nice for people who have to deal with it, because it is expensive. Now, what can be done about this? Now, people yelling boycott, 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 boycott. I agree, consumer power, as I said to begin with, at the beginning of all of this huge amount of dirge, <laughs> consumer power is important. It is massively important. And yes, boycotting GW and their products will make them see. You know, maybe not to begin with, but and the duration of the boycott, again, you know, you they will sort of go, oh, maybe we've, you know, crossed a line here. You know, will they go back on themselves? Who knows? I don't know. But it might stop some future developments that they want to bring out. Now, um, for a boycott to work, not one person, not two people, not three. We need big numbers. You, you need big numbers of people to deal with it. You really do. You cannot just say, you know, have somebody on there, I'm done with GW. I've had enough. I'm going to something else. Ba 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 ba. It's, it's no good because it's just showing that you've got some sort of sour grapes. Now, if you want to try a boycott, then basically what you need to do 
is, um, you know, yeah, of course, stop buying their products and what else have you. You know, play their products and what else have you. But if you have a YouTube channel or you are um, a DCM of a, of a forum like Daka Daka, Bella Lost Souls and what else have you, or you're like miniwargame.com, you know, Joey Berry uh, with, with Warhammer Joey, um, what's his name, Lester Bursley, Buy Painted, you know, myself included if people are going to do it, you know, if you've got a YouTube channel, what you're doing is you're, right, I'm going to promote this because this is Games Workshop. I'm going to paint it for you and it's promoting Games Workshop. Now, what all of these people need to do is just to say, no, we've had enough. We are not going to do this. You know, um, WWF do this. They are asked for an Earth Hour each time to hit the power company's heart. Sorry about the shake. Caps just jumping off the, off the uh, thing. You know, what they do is they basically, you know, have you know, ask for an earth hour. People to turn off their electricity because that will really hit power stations. You know, the electricity isn't going anywhere, but they're still using fuel to keep their turbines going. If they, if WWF were to do a, an earth hour during um, peak time, that is um, uh, dinner time or in the middle of, um, uh, of a final, like a football or rugby final, where people go up and make a cup of tea halfway through in the half time, um, then basically, um, yeah, that's going to hurt them because they have to bring, to, to deal with the increase of demand, they have to bring secondary generators online to basically power the grid. And, you know, and, and most of the same in other countries. Now, you know, WWF are a big enough, they're a big enough uh, organisation to ask people to do this, but the most important thing is, is that they are a voice. That is the most important thing. They are a voice. They're not just a couple of people, they're a voice that reaches an awful lot of people. Now, Bella of the Lost Souls, miniwargaming.com, um, Joey, uh, Wama Joey, uh, Buy Painted, all those people are, you know, Daka Daka, all the forums are voices for promoting GW products. Now, if they all were to join that, you know, Wargamers Consortium as well, you know, I can't forget the chairman, right? I'm saying he's a good bloke. You know, the thing is, is that if you've got all of this going on, if they all sort of said, right, no, we're going to not do anything, and basically say, right, we're not going to do anything Games Workshop related, we're not going to promote Games Workshop, you know, the DCMs of, um, of uh, Daka Daka and Bell's Lost Souls and Vampire, VampireCounts.net and all that, if they were to basically sort of say, right, we're going to close down the threads which have anything to do with the GW games, but keep the others open, then basically that's going to really start making think people think, ooh, actually, yeah. And then people, you know, might be able to start, you know, uh, some, you know, they, uh, sorry about that, that was just the usual cold, cold, cold calling crap that we get in this country. Um, um, yeah, basically what I was saying, um, yeah, you know, if they were just basically to start saying, right, we're all going to join up, we're all going to join forces and say, right, enough's enough, we're not going to promote, promote your, um, we're not going to promote your your products. We're not going to promote your games. You know, yeah, it doesn't mean that people don't, won't play them at home. You know, we're going to start promoting things like War Machine and Hordes. I didn't know what War Machine and Hordes was until um, I uh, when I joined uh, a little bit after when I joined uh, the Barmy War Games Club, from, you know, relatively near where I live. You know, I I didn't know. Um, I was I play a lot of Rome Total War on my computer because I think it's a fantastic computer game. And the funniest thing was, is that I was thinking to myself, Ooh, I wonder, that's the cat scratching on a scratching post, which is right next to the tripod, sorry. Um, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if there's actually a room, like a room to war, but for the desktop, because that would be fantastic. And I was trying to home in, thinking, oh, I might be on something there. And so I did a little bit of research and found Hail Caesar. Again, you know, these games, you know, there's plenty amount of games out there and a lot of them are very good and some of the models are absolutely fantastic and some of them are better than GW models. You know, I'm not counting fine cars, but you know, in general, you know, a lot of their models are very, very good and the games are very good. You know, if these people, if the people that have voices were to start um, promoting different game platforms, different models and different stuff like that, then people would realise actually there's a wider world rather than Games Workshop and then Games Workshop would start to feel a bit rocky. And it is an important thing, so if you are going to boycott or try to get some, some sort of boycott, boycott movement, these are the sort of things that I feel that you must be doing, you know, to try and help. I mean, if you feel there's another way or whatever, then please do put, you know, put your comment down below, but you know, 
Um, and, you know, and the other thing, if there are games being developed now, please, please bring them out within sensible prices because money talks in business. And if you brought them out with sensible prices, then that will start to rock GW. If you brought out a good game, second cap, I'm scratching now. If you brought out a good game with good models, Milo, thank you. If you bring out a good game with good models and made it a good price, I'm not saying you know price yourself out or give yourself a very minuscule profit, but I'm just saying you know sort of don't expect people to rush to your game if you're going to sell something this big for I don't know uh, let's say eight pounds, nine pounds, something like that. You know, maybe consider doing something along those lines. Right. Well, I've chatted on far too long. Um, games were. Uh, <laughs> People of YouTube, sorry, I've you know I've I've all well, Games Workshop. If you're watching this, um, I've chatted on far too long. I've got stuff to be dealing with. I'm off to Holland tomorrow to see Epica um, VIP tickets for you, um, on their 10th anniversary uh, concerts in Eindhoven, which will hopefully be a lot of fun. So um, basically, people of YouTube, um, if you want to, you know. Do that. It's totally up to you. Don't matter. You know, do it down below. If you want to put your comments down below, please do. Um, I hope I really haven't bored you. Stupid. Yes. All right, then, people. Catch you later.